Hi, I'm Andrew Strom, author of the book Kundalini Warning, uh, False Spirits Invading the Church. Now, of course, that's a very radical title, and uh, we're going to be looking at a, a huge amount of video footage in this documentary, and I want to show you some of the shocking things and, and just how similar they are to the Kundalini cults of Hinduism and the New Age movement, Eastern religions. Um, the stuff that's been invading in the last, say, 16 to 17 years, I believe it's the worst invasion in church history. So we've got a lot to look at. And my background is I've been involved in the charismatic movement myself for over 25 years. I've been part of the prophetic movement. I was part of that movement for 11 years. So I saw all of this incredibly alarming and disturbing stuff coming in uh, while I was involved. I first heard about this man, Rodney Howard Brown, in about 1993-94. He was holding huge meetings in the United States, very popular, and was starting to have a huge influence with his drunkenness. He called himself the Holy Ghost Bartender, and he would lay hands on people, imparting to them this laughter, or he would wave his hands at people, and this laughter would overcome them, or shaking, or uncontrollable jerking. Uh, all these manifestations were starting to happen. And uh, he became huge in the word of faith because he's a huge prosperity preacher. So he uh, got himself on Kenneth Copeland's uh, television program and you can see them behaving drunkenly on stage, live on television. Here's Rodney Howard Brown imparting uh, the spirit of drunkenness and laughter into uh, some of the biggest leaders in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the biggest word of faith, prosperity teachers. A guy called Randy Clark came down, saw what was happening, got this impartation through the laying on of hands, got this anointing himself. And he took it into the vineyard movement. Now here is Todd Mantley explaining uh, how Randy Clark brought this in. He received a spark of the anointing in Tulsa and in Lakeland came down. And just weeks later, God used him as the fire starter for the Toronto outpouring and the Toronto blessing in January 1994. And we have here tonight Randy Clark. And I asked him to come out, dear Randy. Because I know you're a fire starter, and you've been lighting fires all over the world. So it entered into the Toronto Airport Vineyard Church, mm -hmm. and so it became known as the Toronto Blessing. went worldwide under that name, the Toronto Blessing. Everybody knew what that was about, people falling down, acting drunken, laughing hysterically, shaking uncontrollably, or uh, jerking backwards and forwards, their, their head shaking back and forth, people even roaring like lions, people making animal noises. Um, you know, this stuff had not been seen in the church. I mean, it may be in a tiny way on the fringes. This stuff had never been seen in the church on this scale before, and it invaded worldwide. So all around the world, especially in the Commonwealth countries, we're talking England and all through the UK, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Canada, and many other nations all over the world, all through Europe, all of the charismatic movement was into this stuff uh, for the large part. And so this thing became a worldwide sensation just in a couple of years. Now the basic question that we're asking in this documentary is why are these manifestations so similar to Eastern religions and Hinduism and the Kundalini cults and yet they're not found in scripture, they're not found in the Bible, they're not found in classical Christianity at all. <laughs> Of course, in Hinduism, one of the most common ways of experiencing a kundalini awakening is through a guru placing his hand upon your forehead. This is called Shaktipat. 
And when they do that, you'll be infused with this incredible love and this wave of emotion. You'll fall down. There'll be all these manifestations, maybe animal noises, uh, joy and weeping and shaking. This is a Kundalini awakening and amazingly, it is exactly the same as what we have been seeing in the Now this all began with Rodney Howard Brown imparting a new anointing into a bunch of leaders and they spread it around the world. In fact, it spread like wildfire. How do we know that Rodney Howard Brown had a pure anointing? How do we know it wasn't a Kundalini spirit from the beginning? Because it seems absolutely identical to it. Now, one of the very clearest signs of a Kundalini awakening has always been these Kriyas. You see this woman involved in the New Age movement. She's walking along exhibiting these Kriyas happening in voluntary uh, jerking motions. And the staggering thing about it is that we are seeing again and again and again these exact same type of Kriyas right through the Toronto movement. This has always been one of the clearest signs of Kundalini that we know of. A friend of mine from South Africa who's done a tremendous amount of research on this topic says that Kundalini is like a false Holy Spirit. It produces even miracles and healings and fusions of love and power and energy and emotion and uh, all these kinds of things and yet it's the Hindu version of the Holy Spirit, and it's not holy. Now, we all know that in the last days, the Bible speaks again and again, warning of deception, seducing spirits. It says that it will be perilous times will come. It says there will be lying signs and wonders. It says all of these things, soberness, sobriety, uh, being alert, being watchful. This is what it says to us all the way through the prophecies of the last days. Here we are. We're in the end times now. And what do we have on our hands? We have a movement that's promoting weird and bizarre signs and wonders. We have a movement promoting drunkenness when we're told to be sober in the last days again and again. It's promoting all kinds of whacked out spiritual experiences and we are warned in the last days, watch out for seducing spirits. The Bible even says, it goes as far as saying this, if possible, the very elect themselves would be deceived. So I don't want to be taking any chances with deceiving spirits in the last days. If it's weird, if it looks like Hinduism, if it looks like it's from some Eastern religion, I don't want any part of it. The charismatic movement should have shut it out and said, no, we're not having this. This is exactly what is warned about in Scripture. Welcome to the second part of this documentary. I'm Andrew Strom, author of the book Kundalini Warning, Are False Spirits Invading the Church? As we've already seen in the 1990s, this bizarre new movement with drunkenness and animal noises falling down, jerking and all of this spread around the world. They think Toronto something. Wait till they come to Boston. <laughs> And of course, Charisma Magazine, one of the most popular Christian magazines, was right behind it. In the USA, another revival took off in Brownsville, Pensacola, which at least had real repentance preaching, but it also had a lot of this truly bizarre stuff as well. It aches and he grieves for your spirit. He grieves for you. <laughs> 
And then in 2008 came the biggest one of all, Todd Bentley and the Lakeland Revival. This outpouring kicked off when Todd Bentley, a 32-year-old Canadian with a long-time healing ministry, came to do just five nights of meetings in one Lakeland church. Bam! We're in 214 nations a night, potential audience 400 million, and, and 10 hours a day. We're, we're literally around the world. People are seeing what's happening here in Florida. That's because God TV made the unprecedented and extremely expensive decision to preempt all their primetime programming and broadcast the Lakeland meetings every night. Now there's no question that this was one of the biggest, most publicized movements that the Christian world has ever seen. We had 550,000 different computers have logged into the webcast. That's incredible. But of course the Lakeland movement was also loaded with the same bizarre manifestations as we've seen elsewhere. A little bit of that glory is coming on me. And we're, we have an international television audience tonight. <laughs> and I got that vibrating again. Lord, let everybody vibrate. So what were some of Todd Bentley's biggest influences? Well, he tells us himself. But one outpouring that's most precious to me, because it brought intimacy and the presence of God to the church. It brought refreshing and renewal to the church, was what took place in Toronto, Canada. So it's no surprise that Todd Bentley invited the founder of the Toronto Blessing, Randy Clark, to minister at this new revival. I see some of you already the power of God. It's like 110. God, make it 220. Now thousands and thousands of leaders and Christians were coming to Lakeland from all over the world to get an impartation of the Spirit. And our focus here in Florida every night is I lay hands on every single person that comes, whether it's 5,000, 10,000, and I'm praying, God, give it away, give it away, give it away. That's the focus here, impartation. Some are saying this is the most contagious anointing the world has ever seen. Just look at what people are receiving here and taking back to their own city and their own church. Here's what happened in Dudley, England, when the Lakeland anointing arrived there. And this was repeated all around the world in hundreds and hundreds of churches wherever this anointing went. Even Charisma magazine began to question some of what was going on. But that didn't stop the very biggest leaders in the charismatic movement from endorsing and promoting this movement. On June 23, 2008, they held a special commissioning ceremony for Todd Bentley live at Lakeland with the very biggest apostles and prophets of the charismatic movement. This is Peter Wagner, the head apostle of the entire charismatic movement worldwide. And here's Rick Joyner, the top prophet of the movement. This commissioning represents a powerful spiritual transaction taking place in the invisible world. With this in mind, I take the apostolic authority that God has given me and I decree to Todd Bentley, your power will increase, your authority will increase, your favor will increase. Your influence will increase. Your revelation will increase. Of course, only weeks later, Todd Bentley's movement completely fell apart. And no amount of Stacey Campbell, Shea 